Yes, sir, man. You was just hearing the sweet sounds of Little Benny and the Masters. That song is called The Message. Now let's dive right into the video. So Go-Go will forever be one of the most creative and fascinating music genres in black American culture. And one of the more interesting things that really attracted me is the many different drum patterns and melodies created or perfected by different bands like... Take Northeast Groovers for instance. Listen to this pattern. This is from NEG's project titled Straight From The Basement, released back in 93. And that record got a unique rhythm, sort of like a Jamaican type vibe. And it's definitely one of their standout tracks. And every time you hear the rhythm, you know you're experiencing something original. Even the break part with the drum rolls is memorable. For the honey, man. BYB got plenty of original drum patterns, so many that I could have made a solo video going through their arsenal of music, breaking down the different styles they incorporated. Year after year were all of the dope jams and more, but one track in particular, Skillet. To me, this is the start of heading towards more of a bounce beat that TCB coined. This was the first time I personally heard a pattern with that up-tempo bounce type swing right at the change up of the song. Now some people may argue this point or call it a reach but unless you can point to another song from Backyard prior to Skillet that goes into this same bounce or a different bounce type swing I would say Skillet is what originally and specifically inspired the TCB bounce beat. Now we got you all in now. Let's make it bam, bam. The skillet beat is not really the same as the breakdown beat. The swing is different. And on the skillet track, you can hear Big G ad-libbing saying <laughs> Sound identical to Polo's ad-lib. I think the bounce beat inspiration is heard more in the rototom pattern of skillet. And like I mentioned with the ad-lib of Big G. Together, it's safe to say that this is that moment, that defining moment that laid the foundation for a brand new pattern change in Go-Go. Now let's switch gears and go back to the Godfather, Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers, and how they incorporated jazz over these impressionable drum patterns from back in the day. This is where you really get a chance to see range musically, and it's the horn sections that really stand out on tracks like Harlem Nocturne. Let's slow it down and appreciate the fact that there was a time where you got the real thing. We not talking about keyboard manipulation. We talking about actual horn players contributing in a band. To be on one accord, to not mess up the notes, being consistent, it's safe to say the skill level and standard was extremely high. So what I found out was the original Harlem Nocturne music was written by an American composer named Earl Hagen in 1939. And later you had different versions recorded by various people and used on TV shows. But apparently Earl wrote the record as a tribute to Duke Ellington and Johnny Hodges. Now, of course, none of this have nothing to do with Go-Go. Outside of the fact that Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers really did the song justice, putting that swing to it for real. But here's what it sound like originally. So right at the 3 minute and 20 second mark of the Chuck Brown live version, you get the solo drum roll at the break. (music) 
and then they bring the instruments back and Chuck just let it ride. It's a moment to appreciate, man. It's a smooth, feel-good, jazz-influenced, vintage go-go rendition. It's clean, it's elegant, almost as if it was made to be used by the band. They really owned it for real. That's his record. So Chuck and the Soul Searchers sampled the Woody Woodpecker theme song. I'm sure everybody hip to this, but also nobody ever talked about how Chuck used the Little Pig intro from the Looney Tunes in the beginning of his lyrics. That's all, folks. The way he did it was dope. I guess because of them using the whole Woody Woodpecker sample, it inspired Chuck with the lyrics to start it off that way on the record. This was on the same album as Harlem Nocturne with eight different band members at the time. And one of those guys was the talented Leroy Fleming, who sung vocals and played the saxophone. Before he got down with Chuck, Leroy joined a group called the Young Senators who formed in 1965, consisting of seven guys. They are recognized as one of DC's earliest go-go bands and the very first go-go band to ever have a number one record on their own label. The song was titled Jungle. Technically, the record don't have that traditional go-go sound. Of course, that came later on. This was more soul, funk, and R&B, if anything. The Young Senators toured with the Motown legend Eddie Kendricks in 1972, and I love doing these timestamps to acknowledge historical events or legendary people. So with that being said, the same year, 1972, Another DC native, William Edward Devon, re-recorded a song that he had previously wrote called A Cadillac Don't Come Easy. That song changed to Be Thankful For What You Got, and two years later, the whole world would know that song. Diamond in the back, sun the top, digging in the scene with a gangster link against the white wall. But as far as the Young Senators, they released two singles on their independent label before linking up with Eddie Kendricks. Some of them did background vocals on a popular song by Kendrick's called Keep On Trucking." Later, they were inducted into the Go-Go Hall of Fame in 2002. Now, Leroy Fleming moved on to joining Chuck and the Soul Searchers in the late 70s. The success of Bustin' Loose took them on a countrywide tour that led to them sharing the stage with musical giants like Gladys Knight and Bobby Womack. But since we're talking about the many different styles and drum patterns, we gotta mention one of the most influential turns of events in the 1980s. The legendary drummer for Chuck Brown, Ricky Sugarfoot Wellman. Rest in peace. Who did I first go see? Sugarfoot Ricky Wellman. So he changed the entire field to go go. It went from to Y'all don't understand what that did to me. And just to really grasp what Buggy was saying, I had to go back and play songs from the early 80s, from other phenomenal bands, and I listened intently. Before 1985, Go-Go was real fast. But Runjo took a little different turn. It seemed like a simpler pattern, but slower, and sometimes less is more. Holy smile is on the What did you do? Let's continue these breakdowns, man. This is part one. We got to come back with more. Stay tuned.